Matt Groening's The Simpsons changed the way that we looked at animation. He had discovered Yellow Gold with his then new formula of an animated satirical sitcom based on family life. This then very different approach to animation helped the medium be seen in a new light. No longer just perceived as a mere medium for children's cartoons and fairy tale films as it was so often typecasted, but rather a way in which we can openly mock the world around us and society as a whole. Of course there were attempts at adult satirical animations that tried this before, but none were as successful as what Matt Groening had created. He broke new ground. Hey, look at this. I am a wiener. <laughs> it sure is. This recipe for success soon allowed the floodgates to open. You wouldn't have your Big Mouth, Rick and Morty, or even your Bojack Horseman if The Simpsons didn't break the mold first. And at the height of The Simpsons' popularity, us Brits wanted a slice of that animation action. And for the longest time, we tried to make our own great British animation for adults. The most recent attempts, that being of course the full English, the British Family Guy Try Hard, and Warren United, another attempt at creating a British cartoon to represent us in the animation world. And ugh, jeez, even the title sequence makes me want to cringe. <laughs> and then there was nothing for the longest time until I read a while back in a BBC article that said the BBC were investing in a new animated adult orientated animation show called Sticky. Sticky follows four best friends who attend a college in the fictitious London borough of Shatford. When the internet suddenly disappears, the world is thrown into chaos. As you can imagine, I was already just excited at the fact that we were getting a brand new British adult animation. Okay, I thought. Let's see how this goes, let's get excited, let's see what we have to offer the animation world again. Oh boy, was I in for a surprise. Oh, yo, check out this new low cap video, it's proper mental. Later, I'm watching a live tweeting Game of Zombies. What's Game of Zombies? It's the award winning spin off of Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead. Someone better get me back on the internet right now or I'm gonna kick off. What have you shitty people done to me damn internet? I'm trying to sexy scan. Oh, oh my oh. god! God, I'm so sorry you had to witness that. That was awful, wasn't it? I mean, what was that? Just... Oh, it was awful! I, 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 it, it's, that was... I, 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 oh. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> oh, and in my rage I seem to have revamped my channel due to how bad Sticky was. Huh, or at least it's a rather good excuse for one. Oh, nice new colour, that's cool. Well, it never used to be this way, you know. Sticky is just an absolute disgrace to the great legacy of British adult animation. It really wasn't always like this, you know. It really wasn't. We used to have some great shows, a real decent attempt at taking on the adult animation and satire genre in general. Us Brits hungered for our own Simpsons-like success and admired Groening's creation from afar and often we used to attempt at making our own mark on the animation world with our own decent British adult animation. Sadly, it was to no avail. But back in the early years, we used to give it our best shot and create some real diamonds in the rough. And a lot of them are my absolute favourites in the animation archives that I adore. And just be warned, some of these will get rather grim and dark later on. Just as a heads up, this will be a three-part series, as there's actually loads of adult animated British animations out there. Some that I actually forgot about. Too much to cover in one video, in fact. So, hi, I am the Blue Artisan, and today I'm going to show you some of the very best of British adult animations. The first to spring to mind from our earliest attempts at this genre was back in the late 90s with the BBC's Stressed Eric. The gritty crew grown-up animation that though was made in the US, it was produced in Britain by Klasky Kupo of Rugrats fame, with partnership with Absolutely Productions. Although co-produced by Klasky Kupo, which isn't really surprising when you look at the animation style and designs when you think about it, they only really hung around for one season. They changed the animation studio to Vargas Studios in season 2. This series was intended to be the British answer to The Simpsons. While not following the format of The Simpsons entirely, instead, this series focused on separating itself from The Simpsons ideology by showcasing the stressful life of a single divorced father with some rather special children. 
a daughter who's pretty much allergic to everything, and a special Ed son who doesn't really say much. And of course making Eric's life even more stressful is his estranged wife who is a then into new age stuff hippie, and a drunken vulgar babysitter. Stressed Eric is set in a less than idyllic view of what most people from outside Britain would perceive London. Not at all like the American ideology of how, say, the cockney friendly Mary Poppins like aesthetic that London is so often admired to be like, but rather our jolly little England is portrayed in this series in a fashion we cynical Brits rather view London ourselves, as a grim, dark, stale, ugly, gritty depiction of what we Brits perceive to be the unjovial truth of our grimy, polluted city that this series depicts. And you know, I like that. As well as Eric's family life helping elevate his stress, he's also got side characters that help increase his stress levels too. You've got the annoying secretary and his love-to-hate perfect next-door neighbours, as well as the stereotypical cartoon boss that keeps throwing Eric around. Eric's attempt at having an almost stress-free life always goes wrong, and results at the end of every episode of Eric gaining a rather admittedly disgusting bulging vein to erupt from the top of his forehead and strangle him to the point of passing out. I found the character of Eric Feeble, you get it, to be rather sympathetic and the situations that escalate his stress with the various scenarios of each episode are pretty funny. And there's even some great running gags that really help you get at least one genuine chuckle out of an episode. Stressed Eric ran for 13 stressful episodes over the course of two seasons, but it was attempted to have a US adaptation, with Hank Azaria cast at the role of Eric himself. Unfortunately, the series never really took off, and suffered from the curse of LOW RATINGS, that eventually would be the final vein-thumping strangulation to end the series. One of Channel 4's attempts to foray into the adult animated sitcom would be from an animator and cartoonist Candy Guard, who created a series called Pond Life. Pond Life is based around the antics of the titular character Dolly Pond. Dolly is a aspiring yet lazy individual who is stuck in her way of life with her family, friends and even ex-boyfriend, and of course doing the same job every day, but aspires to do more with her life by breaking into new exciting careers and opportunities. I've got a job! I've got a job! I have! A proper job in an office with proper money and everything! But when the time actually comes for these opportunities and presents themselves to her, she eventually backs out, wanting to remain in her same old lifestyle. Oh, I made a complete muck-up of it at the forge. This series has a wonderfully simplistic art style unique to Candy Guard. With its basic use of line drawings and very little application of colour, it works very well in the show's favour. It's very different looking and all for the right reasons, and it sets itself apart in this aspect from other animated TV shows at the time. Originally, the first series ran for 10 minute shorts and was broadcast on Channel 4. Channel 4 and the animated angst of Dolly and Co. The second season went on into more in-depth episodes of 20 minutes, which is when the show really hit its stride in my opinion. It had more time for character development, and the dilemmas of Dolly's predicaments to develop more. I had read that the show creator Candy Guard was worried at first when she was asked to try 20 minute format. She was worried she wouldn't come up with an adequate script to fill in the 20 minute time slot but I'd say what she conceived was brilliant. Pond Life was not too extravagant and more down to earth, but had funny situations with a likeable cast, set in such a charming, simplistic art style, and not to mention the brilliant use of sound effects. Excuse me, excuse me, move inside the tray. Can't you hear the man? What's going on? Pond Life, in my opinion, was one of the best animated sitcoms that we had to offer. The main character is flawed, yet still very likeable, and even relatable. So, what went wrong with Pond Life? Well, maybe this visual representation created by Candy Guard can kind of sum it up for you. And what else didn't help was the fact that it was actually meant to be shown at 9pm on Channel 4, as it had quite some adult language used in the show. It instead was moved to Teen Time slot where it was butchered. Its more friendly slot was thought to be better for the show, to help it gain more of a teenage audience, whom it was considered its target. 
However, its target audience instead tuned into the other channel as Pond Life was broadcast at the same time of popular Australian soap opera Neighbours. Which was a great shame as it spelt the end of this truly wonderfully original funny show. Bringing Come sheep. away with me. Song! In the sheaves. Have you all finished? I Am Not an Animal was an early 2000s attempt to get back into the animation sitcom saddle by the BBC. It had a digital look of photo montage like characters that, much like Pond Life, was again very visually different. It works great for this series, unlike this rubbish. In fact, its animation style is one of this series' strengths. I Am Not an Animal is an animated black comedy based around a bunch of incredibly intelligent lab animals that were rescued from a scientific experiment. Don't recall eating sugar pops. Release. Each animal had its own personality traits, and yeah, I got to admit, the bird kind of does look like a British stewy. It's silly, really, you know. Here we are, farmland, farm equipment, farm house. What's all that about? I know, let's build rocket ships! Yes! After they're rescued from their scientific experiments, they're thrown into the real world where they try to adjust themselves to regular life and come to terms with the fact that they're highly intelligent animals and the rest of the animal kingdom isn't quite as smart as them. They get into various different predicaments as they try to accustom themselves to regular life. Uh, which is actually a pretty good concept for a show, really. How may you listen to me help you? Sometimes the writing can be a bit hit and miss in this series as it tries to be too topical with its pop culture references, but it's very trying and I think with some real development this show could have become something unique. As there's a few episodes that are really a great laugh riot, like the episode where the bird tries to become a famous pop sensation. The voice cast is very impressive, featuring the great vocal talents of Steve Coogan, Amelia Bullmore, Julia Davis, Kevin Eldon, Arthur Matthews, Simon Pegg as well, yikes. Dear Kieran, well the limo arrived and I just had this image of premieres and champagne brunches at the Aberdeen Steakhouse. Stylistically as well, I think they made the right choice for its animation. It looks really well done, and you can tell some effort's actually gone into the animation. Style aside, this series didn't really take off very well, having only one series. Which again is a crying shame because I think with the right development, I Am Not an Animal could have turned into something very special. I think what I appreciate most about this series is the fact that it stands itself aside from the other animated adult sitcoms at the time. Giving it an extra season probably would have helped it take off a little more, but well, again, it just wasn't meant to be. Hello. Probably the most tamest edition on this subject, but I do mean that in a positive way. After all, not all adult animations have to be dark, vulgar, violent and sweary to be good. It's the midlife adventures of middle-aged couple Bob and Margaret. And while technically this is a British animation, it's also part Canadian as well. Created by Allerton Snowden, whom provided the voice of Margaret, I would not keep the f***ing can opener. And David Fine, this series has its roots way back when Channel 4 invested heavily in animation. Allerton and David created a short animated piece called Bob's Birthday for the channel. It was based around a surprise party that doesn't go too well, as Bob has somewhat of an episode of a midlife crisis. Well, you can actually watch this short on YouTube, it's very funny. This short was so well received back in 1993 that it won quite a few awards, which led to great enthusiasm from Channel 4, who then wanted to turn this short into a fully fledged animated series. Bob Fish the dentist and his wife Margaret cope with everyday situations, such as dining with friends they don't really like and trying to make awkward small talk, going shopping and the trials of renting a movie. This series feels very human, intimate and even relatable. You know Bob and Margaret are just walking through life. They're again very down to earth, but its settings and aesthetics are so wonderfully charming. The characters are ever so British and the humour just so typically English. I do really like the typically cartoon style aesthetics that this world is set in. Again it's very charming, with its big bulbous noses, long drawn faces and big cartoony eyes. It's hard not to like it. The writing's quite well done, although some of the situations of the episodes that Bob and Margaret are in do get a bit dull sometimes, but overall I'd say it's very passable. 
It was in Canada where this series really took off, however, as they decided that they wanted more series, as eventually Bob and Margaret decide to move to Canada and start a new life there. The series then just focused on a new direction, of Bob and Margaret adapting to Canadian life. As back over here in Britain, this series suffered again the terrible curse of... LOW RATINGS! You can currently watch all four seasons of Bob and Margaret on Netflix as well if you wanted to see it for yourself. I'd happily recommend it. After all, Bob and Margaret was a truly wonderful and heartwarming, yet different, piece of adult animation. Hello, I'm Rex and welcome to my world. Moving on to one of the stop motion offerings, it's Aardman Animation's Rex the Runt. Possibly one of the more obscure Aardman animations as well, I might add. Rex the Runt focused on the random adventures of four Plasticine abstract canines. Oh, I was having a sexy dream. About biscuits. Rex, the lead character, often goes about with his doggy pals having adventures on the telly, <laughs> at the cost of ten quid though. Ten quid, alright? Great. What's truly refreshing about this show is how it's not too vulgar, rude or even nasty, but rather it's genuine, gentle and relatable humour that becomes the standard of Aardman Animation Studios. And really exploits the medium of plasticine very well. It at times feels very cartoonish and also childish too, but it still hearts that adult element inside of it as well, making it both relatable to watch for adults as well as children. Oh! Don't even think about it! It's a great example of claymation at its finest, and that's a brilliant aspect to this series. Rex the Runt is full of that odd man humour and style, with great effects and writing. It's not too zany in terms of the situations that it gets itself into, but rather something you'd expect from a natural telly adventure. That's probably the best way to go into Rex the Run. Just expect some good old fashioned light hearted humour, complete with that excellent Ard Man touch. The next stop motion entry is so foul that even everything that was somewhat naughty for a stop motion clay animation dog that you saw in Rex makes it look like a preschool show. Even its title contains a bad word, and you're never going to see a stop motion animation ever like this. It's Crapston Villas. This show was a first for a couple of things. It's a stop motion adult animated soap opera. I'd say this is also the only stop motion animation that would show puppet nudity, sex, realistic violence and vomit. Gee, just looking at this show makes you feel dirty. And you can't help but feel that that's a real achievement for this medium. Crapston Villas has no real one major character, as this show is set in a house share full of individuals that are thrown into situations and weekly dramas. Alright, yeah, yeah. First broadcast on Channel 4 in the mid to late 90s, Crapston was made more for the young youths who were Channel 4's target audience at the time. <laughs> this show hit all the right spots for all kinds of awfulness. However, I do mean that in a somewhat good way. Again, you can't help but love the dirty details of the characters and the animations that they perform. I mean, I've never really seen a stop motion puppet wipe their bum before. And for that, I kind of applaud the animators to that attention to grotty detail. Well done. I mean, come on, Aardman Animations, this ain't. But instead, this was produced by one of my favourite satirical production companies, Spitting Image. I will have a steak. How'd you like it? Oh, Lord, please. And what about the vegetables? Oh, they'll have the same as me. The script writing is pretty fantastic in this, and I felt genuinely invested in the character arcs of the residents. I'm in the middle of a lesson. Oh, yes. <laughs> This came from the mind of Sarah Kennedy. Oh, as well, did you know, Sarah Kennedy is also the voice actress for Dolly Pond in Pond Life. Craps and Villas ran its course of two seasons, and left on its season two finale on a really annoying cliffhanger. I always wanted to know what happened at the end of this. As you are no doubt aware, I am a fun lover and connoisseur of animation. I like to think of my animation films, books and rare animated series 
as a sort of fine wine collection on my hard drive. And now I'm going to share with you one of my most treasured pieces of animation. The creme de la creme of British adult animation satire that's curated for those with a dark taste. As I present unto you, Monkey Dust. Made in the early 2000s, as well as being set in the dark suburban areas of London at night, Monkey Dust was a rather different animation entirely in the way it presents itself, almost like a sketch show that rolls on from one scene to the next, changing in its various styles from one artist into another, but it fluidly showcases the switches of its style that each scene just seems to naturally flow into each other. The sketches displayed in each episode, as well as the topics shown, are controversial, and at times, well, <laughs> you certainly wouldn't be able to get away with the subject's Monkey Dust tackles now. And that's just one of the great strengths of Monkey Dust. It's frank and un-PC for sure, but it still manages to make light of the situations. Uh, excuse me, you wouldn't happen to know a, a street with a big pub on the corner? It's round here somewhere. Oh, are you thinking of the old crown? Okay, yeah, 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 I mean, you would not be able to make light of half the subject matter that this series tackled. It made light of terrorism. We are planning an assassination which will cut out the cancer at the very heart of our godless society. Oh, that's nice. Who are you going to kill? Uh, top of our list at present is Alfie Moon. Monkey Dust also featured reoccurring characters in each episode, like Ivan Dobsky, the meat safe murderer, who was a play on the wrongly convicted Stephen Kisco, with classic catchphrases like I never done it! I only said I done it so they wouldn't give me another gel frazy enema! The animation style may seem choppy to some, but I'd argue that's not the case. This was the time where Flash and Illustrator became the norm in the animation industry, and collaborating with various different artists, illustrators and animators, this show was produced on such a tight schedule that they had to take advantage of the software used to develop the show. Oh and look Daddy Granny sent me five pounds! <laughs> well, remember to send her a thank you card, and I'd better look after the five pounds. Are you going to use it to feed your addiction, Dad? Yes, Lucy. Yes, I am. Again, the subjects it tackles are grim, dark and controversial, but boy is it ever funny. I don't know, but he had black hair. Bloody black haired bastards. We won't be staying. This wonderfully night. British and it's darkly right. satirical comedy yeah. animation series was co created by Harry Thompson and Sean Pye for BBC Three. Three is a magic number. Monkey Dust ran for three seasons before its co creator Harry Thompson sadly passed away, which truly was a great loss. I'd go so far as to say that Monkey Dust is probably not only the best adult British animation, but probably the best adult animation in general. Damn you, Hitler! You can lock up our bodies, but you can never lock up our freedom! If only Johnny were here... Guess my ears were burning again. Johnny! Johnny! Kill him! I'd like to go into further in depth on how great Monkey Dust itself really is, because there's just so much to talk about. Rewatching this series again has shown me how little we as a society have not advanced. And though this show is more than 10 years old now, watching Monkey Dust back is, well, it's kind of like watching history repeat itself. Beware the hour of 11 o'clock, my children. Why, Father? Because 11 o'clock is chucking out time at the castle. Piss off, you gypsy fuckers! Hey, go on. Over. But we have EU passports now! Well, why don't you f off back to the EU then? And that just shows you how well Monkey Dust holds up. It's still relevant today, even after all these years. And that's one of the many reasons why I still love Monkey Dust. Now that's entertainment! It was good at the end, wasn't it? 
Hi, and thanks for watching today's video. I hope I showed you some rare animations that you probably haven't seen before. If you like the video, you know the drill. Hit the like button, as well as subscribe if you're a new viewer to my channel. You can keep up to date with my latest projects and information on the Blue Artisan Facebook and Twitter, links in the description below. Before I sign out though, I just got a couple of things to say. First, a big shout out to Stuart Jip from Video Game World, who gave me a shout out in one of his videos and has helped support the channel by giving some great advice as well as another shout out to the Alpha J from the Alpha J Show for helping making my awesome YouTube banner. Thanks man! And thanks to all the new subscribers as well for sticking by me as I haven't uploaded in a while. I just wanted to get back on track and reinvent the channel a little bit. So I will do a Monkey Dust video soon, however the next video will be another animation celebration ready for the upcoming spring, so keep an eye out for that. Until then, I'll see you all next time.